Welcome back. We're going to take another look at factoring and we're going to do a little bit more in-depth factoring here um, in this particular section. We're going to factor trinomials again, but now the coefficient on x squared or the quadratic term is going to, it's not going to be equal to 1. It's going to be, uh, the absolute value is going to be greater than 1. So. Our process, some of it stays the same. Our process tells us to factor out the greatest common factor. That's the first rule of factoring. We'll always talk about the first rule of factoring is to factor out that GCF. And second, we'll always try then to factor into a pair of binomial factors. Okay, so if A or the coefficient on X squared does not equal one, then we'll want to factor by grouping. That's the most dependable way. Or we can factor by, yeah, I call it educated guess and check. Um, you can do that. It does work, uh, but it takes a little effort. Uh, as you may have seen me mention before, uh, especially when you're doing educated guess and check, make sure you're using a pencil because you're going to need a lot of lead and a good eraser because you're going to make some mistakes along the way. So let's take a look at some samples. So in sample number one, we have 3x cubed plus 12x squared minus 15x. So the initial term here, the one on the far left, 3x cubed is our highest degree. You may see, though, that we have a common factor in every single one of those terms. So let's begin by factoring out 3x. So if we factor out 3x, we're left with x squared plus 4x minus 5, which is still factorable. So we can factor this particular trinomial into a pair of binomial factors. x squared will factor x and x. And now we need factors of negative 5 that add up to positive 4. Well, factors of negative 5, we're going to have, uh, it's prime, so the only factors are 5 and 1, and that's really good because from 5 and 1, we can get 4. So let's do positive 5 and negative 1. We can check our linear term, in which we have 5x minus x, which leaves us with a positive 4x. So we factored sample number 1 correctly. Sample number two, 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Now this particular problem, uh, there's no greatest common factor. So let's take a look at this. When we have a pair of binomial factors, if you will, we have position 1, position 2, position 3, and position 4. Well, don't we multiply the first position times the third position to get our x squared. And we multiply our second position times our fourth position uh, to get our, in this case, our negative 5. Well, if we want to factor 3x squared, we've got to divide that into two factors. Well, fortunately, 3 is prime, so our only real options are 3x and x. And 2, we need factors of 2 that add up to 7. At least that's what we did when a was 1. But now something interesting is going to happen. Because we have 3x here, when we multiply back, what's going to happen to anything that falls into that fourth position, if you will? Well, when we multiply back, anything we put here is going to be tripled. It's going to be multiplied by 3. So we have some choices to wh where we want to put our factors of 2. Our factors of 2 can either go in the second position or in the fourth position. So if I put 2 here and 1 there, well, they're both going to be positive. Let's go ahead and check our smile. We have positive 2x and 3 times 1 is 
positive 3x, we add that up, we get 5x. That does not equal 7x. So by using the guess and check method and checking the smile, we didn't factor this correctly. So we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and try again. Now we know that both of our factors are going to be positive because everything in our trinomial is positive. So the only other choice we have is to flip the 2 and the 1 and that really works well because when we check to see if she smiles we have 1x and 3 times 2 is 6x and we get 7x when we check our linear term and sure enough we factored that one correctly. Now I'm going to redo this one and I'm going to factor it by grouping. So show you how we'll factor by grouping. And we factor by grouping, what we want to do is we're going to take our 3 and our 2 and we're going to multiply these together. So 3 times 2 is 6. So now what we ask ourselves, we need factors of 6 that add up to 7. Okay, so now we need factors of 6 that add to our linear term or our middle term. Okay, and this sounds a little complicated at first, but after you do it a few times, get the hang of it, it becomes easier and easier. So what we'll do here is we'll take 7x and since factors of 6 would be 3 and 2. Well, that doesn't add to 7, so we'll use 6 and 1. We'll rewrite this as 3x squared plus 6x plus x plus 2. Okay, and 6x plus x equals 7x. So we've really rewritten this. It's going to be the same result though. And now we can factor by grouping. So we will take the first pair and the second pair and group them. Now we'll seek a common factor in 3x squared plus 6x. We'll see that our common factor is 3x. We factor that out and we get x plus 2 plus the quantity x plus 2. So, and of course we know that this is like 1 times x plus 2. So I'm going to pull out the x plus 2. I'm going to factor out the x plus 2 like we've previously done in factoring by grouping. So now we have x plus 2 times 3x plus 1 and we have successfully factored that without using guess and check. Let's go to sample number three. Now this one would be a little bit more challenging with guess and check because we have factors of six, we have lots of choices. We could factor this into uh, six times one, three times two, two times three, and then 10, five times two, 10 times one. We have all sorts of choices. So let's look at this as factoring by grouping. So let's take a look at 6 times 10. Well, we multiply that together, we get 60. So now we need factors of positive 60 whose sum is negative 19. Well, that must mean both our factors must be negative. And sure enough, Factors of 60, or positive 60, would be something like negative 15 times negative 4. Well, that adds up to positive, or multiplies out to positive 60. It also adds up to negative 19. So let's rewrite our trinomial, 6x squared minus 15x 
minus 4x plus 10. And I'm going to rewrite that again, 6x squared minus 15x plus a negative 4x plus 10. You plus or minus guys will love that. So now I have my two groups. And this is always going to work. You won't have to reshuffle anything. This will always work. So we'll go ahead and factor something out of the 6x squared minus 15x. And it looks like we can take 3x out of there. And we're left with 2x minus 5. So now our hope is when we factor out of negative 4x plus 10, we get 2x minus 5 left behind. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2. And I am left with 2x minus 5. If you're not sure about that negative 2, distribute it back in. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. This is beautiful. So uh, we have a 2x minus 5 as our common factor. So we're left with 3x minus 2 times 2x minus 5. We factored it by grouping. No guess and check. Sample number 4. Our leading coefficient here is negative 2x squared. I'm not a huge fan of negative 2x squared. I prefer x squared to be positive here. So what I'm going to do is I look at this. I'm going to take out a common factor of negative 1. So then I'll have 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. So I have the opposite of that entire quantity. I'll just factor out a negative 1. It's a little easier to factor with 2x squared. Now we could do guess and check here, because our factors of 2x squared are just going to be 2x and x. But negative 12, I've got choices. 4 and 3, 6 and 2, 12 and 1. Guess what? I'm going to factor by grouping. So 2 times 12, I'm going to multiply those together. 2 times negative 12 actually equals negative 24. So I need factors of negative 24 whose sum is positive 5. So I need a sum of positive 5. Well, negative 24, would that be positive 12 times negative 2? It would, but our sum is positive 10. Uh, positive 8 times negative 3, that's negative 24. And my sum is positive 5. Beautiful. So I've got the opposite of 2x squared. Now I'm going to convert 5x into 8x minus 3x. So we'll do plus 8x plus a negative 3x minus 12. And now we can factor by grouping. So I'm going to group the first pair and the second pair, and that will always work. So here, the beginning of the first pair, I can take a 2x out. So I have the opposite of 2x times x plus 4. So of course, my hope is that I have an x plus 4 when I factor out of here, and sure enough, if I factor out a negative 3, I am left with x plus 4. And factoring, so now I have the opposite of 2x minus 3 times x plus 4. I have successfully factored that particular problem without guess and check, nice and clean by factoring by grouping. And finally, a different kind of problem. You might be tempted in this particular problem to FOIL this or use your patterns and multiply, and it will work, but I won't let you do that. Uh, I'm going to require you to use the substitution method. So in a situation like this, let's let x plus 5 
equal, can't use x, let's use a different letter, let's let it equal y. So we'll replace x plus 5 with y. So we get 8 times y squared minus 2 y minus 3. And we'll continue to use black. Okay. So this really becomes, I don't even need these parentheses anymore. eight y squared minus two y minus three. Well that we should be able to factor. Let's factor by grouping. We'll probably make this look a little bit better. Eight y squared minus two y minus three. Well, I'm gonna factor by grouping. Eight times negative three is negative twenty four again. I don't know why it did that. Okay, and I need factors of negative 24 that add up to negative 2. So that would be mm, negative 6 times positive 4. This is our sum is negative 2. And of course negative 6 times 4, so we have 8y squared minus 6y plus 4y minus 3. And if I take out a common factor here, I'll group the first pair, I'll group the second pair, so I will take out a 2y and I will get 4y minus 3 plus 1 times 4y minus 3 and my factors are 2y plus 1 times 4y minus 3. So it seems like I've pretty easily factored that. However, x plus 5 was y. So I have to substitute x plus 5 I got to drop it back in there for y, and I got to drop it back in there for y. So we have 2 times x plus 5 plus 1 times 4 times x plus 5 minus 3, which is 2x plus 10 plus 1 times 4x plus 20 minus 3. I'm running out of space. Well, 2x plus 10 plus 1 is 2x plus 11, isn't it? And 4x plus 20 minus 3 is 4x plus 17. And voila, we have factored that complicated particular trinomial using substitution and our knowledge of factoring by grouping. So there's an introduction to factoring by grouping and we will see you in class.